Hey guys, Mike here. So today, I'm here to talk to you about 1989's Back to the Future Part 2, starring Michael J. Fox as Maya McFly and Christopher Lloyd as Dr. Emmett Brown in Back to the Future Part 2. After visiting the future, Maya must go back to 1955 to stop disastrous changes happening to 1985 without affecting his first trip. And so we have... Back to the Future Part 2. So guys, today's movie was requested again by my friend Ryan, who recommended me the first Back to the Future movie. And if you watch my first Back to the Future review, you know that I had mixed feelings about the movie. Basically, I could see why it was an absolute classic, why so many people love that movie, why it's become such an iconic film. But for me personally, I didn't really think it was all that. Nothing against the film, just didn't think it was that amazing. But nevertheless, I still really wanted to watch the other two movies in the series. And so now I'm here to talk to you about the second movie in the trilogy. So, what do I think of Back to the Future Part 2? Well, I gotta be honest, I'd say the first thing that probably disappointed me was the fact that they hardly spent any time in 2015. Because pretty much everyone goes on about, like, you know, Back to the Future, predicting the future, and all that kind of stuff. I would have thought that they'd spend more time there. But they'd probably spend about 15, maybe 30 minutes at the most in 2015. I just thought that more of the movie would have taken place in 2015. But nevertheless. But the parts I did like about the 2015 sequence were the things that it got right about our modern day. Like, my main one being about Jaws 19. How in our modern day we'd just be bombarded with sequel after sequel. And they weren't really far off because in 2015, at the time, that was the year that we had the most billion dollar movies in one year, five to be precise, which was again repeated in 2018 and then surpassed in 2019 when there were nine billion dollar movies. And as well, all of them were from established franchises and most of them were sequels. So it just goes to show that they kind of got that aspect right. And as well, our obsession with 80s nostalgia. Because even back in the 80s, people knew that people would be nostalgic for the 80s. Pretty much everything from books, TV, video games, music, everyone just can't get enough of the 80s. And the way Marty dresses in 2015, it honestly looks like something Kanye West would wear. Though obviously there were some things that it did get wrong about the future. There are no flying cars, there are still lawyers around, and there are no hoverboards. Which is a shame because I wouldn't have mind having a hoverboard. But anyway, beyond the 2015 storyline, they do obviously go back to 1955 to stop something which basically was kind of Marty's fault. But they could have very easily made the film feel like it was a complete retreading of the first one. And in a couple of scenes, it kind of is. Because even in the 2015 part of the movie, they do have some sequences which they end up basically repeating. But even though they are going through the events of the first movie from a slightly different perspective, it didn't really feel like a retreading. It still felt like it was progressing the story. It still felt like it was going somewhere. And it was fun to see how they'd get past each of these encounters. And you'd be sitting there like, oh, I remember that bit from the first movie, or oh, I remember that bit too. And as well, this movie still is very light hide and it is very family friendly, but at the same time, it does really feel like the stakes have increased. Because rather than just dealing with his own personal timeline and the possibility of his own existence being erased, they're dealing with the fact of their whole entire reality being erased. As well as that, they're also dealing with complex timelines. The fact that someone from the future going further into the past would affect their present day. And they make that concept very understandable. Which isn't easy for a lot of time travel movies because they really could have gone down into detail and really kind of muddled things up. Because sometimes the simplest way of getting through a complex situation is just by making it simple. They have to go from the future to the past to stop something in the past from affecting their present day. Yeah, what could be simpler? Now, obviously, there are probably some paradoxes or time loops or something like that that I probably didn't say. But for the most part, it seemed pretty squeaky clean. And for the comedy aspect, again, I wouldn't say this movie was unfunny. It was just that I didn't really find I was laughing very much. Though, again, it was probably the same reason as the first movie, because I'd seen all of the jokes before. Which, you know, you can't hold against the movie. It's not the film's fault. It's pop culture's fault. But there were some lines that I didn't hear before, which did get a laugh out of me. And some lines that I had heard before, which did get a laugh out of me. So, again, not completely unfunny, just... Not exactly a laugh riot, but I don't think that's what the film's going for. It is going for that family-friendly feel, which I do feel it accomplishes brilliantly. And as for setting up for the sequel, it does a brilliant job of doing that too. Because obviously going into this one, I knew there was going to be a sequel. But the way that the movie lays out the breadcrumbs for the sequel, it honestly could have just ended at the second movie and not had a third one. But having said that, it doesn't like force a sequel down your throat. You know, obviously excluding the thing that happens at the very, very end of the movie. Basically what I'm saying is the film doesn't dedicate its time 
to setting up for the sequel. It just does little things here and there that make you intrigued for a sequel. Like when the Doc says, oh, I've always wanted to go to the Old West, or when another character says something about that, or when just before the end you see the clock on the DeLorean change to 1885. Just all little things like this which do set up for the sequel. And then obviously at the end, the incident happens, which is the reason why they have to go back to 1885. And there you are. To be honest though, small nitpicky thing, I probably should have actually turned the movie up before it happened, but in any case, I didn't like the fact that they showed what was going to happen in the movie, you know, basically before I watched it. It's kind of my whole thing with not watching trailers, you know, I just want to watch the movie, I'm already going to watch it, you don't really have to kind of entice me. Basically, it's kind of like going to a restaurant, I go in there because I want to eat, I don't want to have lots of stars, which basically ruin my appetite because, you know, I, I want to eat the food. Sometimes if I don't know what I'm going to be eating, I might have a couple of stars. But you know what? I knew what I was going to be having, so I didn't really need any stars. Complex analogy over. Ooh. Overall, guys, I did like Back to the Future Part 2. The performances were, again, really good. It's exciting. It's funny at times. It's really well written. It manages to make complex time travel understandable for a mass audience. And even though it's dealing with a more serious subject matter, it manages to keep it lighthearted and fun, whilst at the same time reminding you that there are actual stakes for this movie. But do I think you guys should watch this one? I would recommend this film in the exact same way that I recommended the first film. You should watch it, kind of because it's a classic. It's one of those movies that a lot of people should really see. Like Star Wars or Jurassic Park, it's just one of those films that yeah, you just kind of need to see. But as for an actual recommendation, I probably personally wouldn't say this film was amazing. You absolutely need to rush to see it. But having said that as well, I wouldn't actively deter you from seeing it either because this is by no means a terrible movie. It is, in fact, a very good movie. It's just for me, I feel like that over the years, it's just been incredibly overhyped. And at the end of the day, it just couldn't live up to the hype. People big up these movies as gods here. Whereas me... I just see them as, you know, good watches. So make of that what you will. Watch it, don't watch it, it's up to you. Okay, guys, that's my review for Back to the Future Part 2. Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think I should watch next? Whatever it is, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, I've been Michael. See ya.